Hey guys, Operator Juski here, and today we're going to be going over how I record, stream, and also just edit my videos on my channel. A lot of you ask this during live stream comments and chats, and also on the comment sections of my videos. Um, and this is a very, very popular topic. For anybody that's wanting to record videos on YouTube, I think one of the most challenging things about it is just finding the right programs, finding the right settings for the, those programs, and just finding out what hardware you need for it. It's a very, very confusing thing, and there's not really a lot of good perfect guides out there so I wanted to make my own about how I do it this guide won't be the best for anybody but you will enable like you will you'll learn how to adjust some settings here and there to make it better fit you what you're doing um, and what hardware you have so first off let me just say the hardware necessary I mean necessary to record um, gameplay footage now you can record to your own hard drive if you just have one hard drive in your computer which I'm guessing you do that is an option but it's not going to record smoothly imagine this all of your operating system and all of your games are located on that one hard drive and you're also trying to record footage to that one hard drive as well that hard drive is having to read itself to read the textures of the game the sounds of the game everything of the game has to be rapidly read from that hard drive so that hard drive is already doing a lot of work and hard drives cannot do two things at once because it's mechanical it's actually a moving piece inside that disk so that piece has to rapidly move to different locations to read and write on different locations of the hard drive and if you're telling the hard drive to read and write at the same time aka playing a game let's say and the operating system is running in the background with that hard drive like with that hard drive holding the operating system and also you're telling the hard drive to record 1080p 60 fps footage to that same hard drive uh, that is going to bring your FPS down a really, really good bit. So first off, let me just suggest that you need a, you definitely need a secondary hard drive. Most uh, computer motherboards should support another SATA cable, and they should support another hard drive. If, if, make sure that you've got the same power cable that goes into any SATA hard drive, and also make sure that you've got a SATA 3 cable. Um, and a SATA 3 cable is just something like this. I can link these in the description if you guys want. Um, but these are something I would recommend. Just like, let's say, a Seagate 1 terabyte. That is definitely enough. Um, 500 gigabytes are a tiny bit cheaper, but not really enough to justify yeah, they're actually more expensive than the one terabyte. So just grab one terabyte Seagate uh, Barracuda or a Western Digital Blue, and you should be fine with your recording hard drive. Also, make sure to get the connector cable, which is a SATA 3 cable. And this connects, this is the data cord to your motherboard, but you also will need to have an extra power cord. So make sure that your power unit in your computer also has another cord. It should um, to be able to plug in a separate hard drive. Now, whenever you have your new hard drive installed, you will go to Disk Management. I think this actually pops up a little bit easier on Windows 7 than it does on Windows 10. Pretty much just type in Disk in the bottom, and it will say uh, something like Create and Format Disk Partitions, and you can go here, and it will pop up uh, Disk Manager, which is right here. You'll have to right-click and also make like a... I think, you, I think you have to make new volume, and then you just click OK until it makes a new volume. But that you're pretty much just allowing your PC to format that hard drive into what it wants. Um, so you should have, you know, your primary hard drive, which I don't even know if mine's shown here. I think mine is my C drive here. As you can see, that's my solid-state drive. Um, and then I also have my recording hard drive separate of that. And once I go to, let's say, Explorer here... Um, once I go into my Explorer, which I will show you guys in a second, um, as you can see here, my solid state drive is here, and it's almost full, I know, um, and then my recording hard drive, which is nicknamed Frankie after my cat, is right here, and that is a one point, I think that's a 1.8, I guess, terabyte, it's a, it's a two terabyte, pretty much, um, I do have these extra hard drives, don't worry about these. This is my old recording hard drive, it's a 3 terabyte, but it kind of slowed down recently. I think that's also a Seagate Barracuda, but it's a, it's a kind of slightly dysfunctional hard drive, it just is really slow, and Mojo is just for extra games and stuff. But what you need to know is that you need two different hard drives. You need one to hold your operating system in your games, and a separate one to record your footage to, and also render your footage to once you're done. Um, so, that is the hardware necessary to record. Now we're going to go into the software necessary. You will need to download OBS, and OBS Studio is the best program for recording footage. And let me also suggest for hardware, sorry, that you will probably need an NVIDIA graphics card. I perfectly think that it's okay if your processor is doing a lot of the work whenever you're recording or streaming, but honestly, with the I NVIDIA codec of OBS, it's so much easier for your computer to keep those high frame rates up 
when you're recording. So make sure to go to obsproject.com, go to download OBS Studio, and once you've downloaded it, simply install it. I've installed it, and here it is. This is kind of what it will look like when you start up. It's just a basic black screen, you don't really know what's happening, and let me just tell you the basics. Okay, so the main things you need to worry about here are scenes, if you're streaming, uh, sources within the streams, and also your settings. So first off, we're just gonna make sure that you know how things work in OBS. So we're gonna right click in the sources thing, we're gonna go to add, and we're going to go to display capture. This will capture your monitor and whatever is happening within your monitor right now. I think I had Arma full screen so it didn't work. But as you can see here, it's kinda like a matrix looking now because it is reading it, its own monitor and now we're actually getting this kind of like you know, parallel universe effect or whatever, of that you can see multiple mirrors of the image. That's because it's recording the screen. So this is automatically much better than any screen recording program you've seen before that's for free. Bandicam, for example, has the big watermark on top, you know, and it doesn't record at high enough frame rates and high enough details. This one, this is just overall a much better program. I'm going to be showing you why. For full screen applications, I have game capture, so that when the display capture is disabled, aka you have a full screen application open, this will capture any full screen application. So you put game capture on top of display capture, and therefore game capture will pop up whenever you open a full screen game. I also suggest if you're going into streaming having a second monitor, by the way, because then you can pull this over to the right and everything will be on this left screen. Everything that you're recording will be on left screen and your recorder will be on the right, and it's very, very useful. Um, so now we're going to go into settings to optimize and kind of show you all the presets that I use and the uh, encoders and stuff, the codecs that I use and all that. So pretty much in general, just don't worry about this. In stream, don't really worry about this unless you're streaming. And output is really where it gets busy. So we're going to go over to the recording tab first and we're going to show you the recording path. The recording path is where your recordings will go to after you record them. So make sure to place this on your secondary hard drive. So again, here's my SSD. I don't want to place them on there because my games and OS are on that. I want to place it in my recording hard drive on the captured um, folder. So there you go. It's just on a separate hard drive just so that hard drive is separated from my operating system and games. Recording format, make sure to have this around MP4. You can probably try out the others. I don't really know what they'll do, but I, I use MP4. Um, you also want to set up multiple audio tracks. Now, as a starting recorder, you're like, why is that? Why do I want multiple audio tracks? And this will not work with things like Movie Maker, but I honestly suggest if you're going into professional YouTubing, uh, you probably want to use either Sony Vegas or Adobe, Adobe Premiere for this. Uh, Audio tracks being separate are really, really, really important. Uh, you know, there's things like NVIDIA Shadowplay that I've used before that are great recorders, but they just don't record things in multi-wave audio, and that's a huge disadvantage. You can record an hour-long gameplay, and you can go back to recording in Adobe Premiere, and the game is too loud. Your voice is literally just overpowered by the game, and that is the one of the most, like, depressing things when you just record an hour-long awesome armor operation and then you end up not being able to use it because your voice is too loud or your friend's voices are too loud or something like that and you didn't know it at the time. So what audio tracks do is that you can assign different programs to go into different audio tracks or different uh, I guess sounds to go into different audio tracks. So one is my desktop audio or I might, it might be my actual microphone audio, I'm not really sure. But one is probably my desktop audio. Um, and so Battlefield, let's say, when I'm playing Battlefield with friends, uh, the TeamSpeak sounds will go into Audio Track 1. The Battlefield audio will go into Audio Track 1. Then on Audio Track 2, my microphone audio goes in there. Because I cannot adjust, I cannot hear my microphone audio compared to my game audio live, that is really, really important. Now, TeamSpeak audio of your friends talking compared to the game isn't so big of a deal because while you're recording, you can still hear the difference, like you can hear the difference of your friends' voices compared to the game. So in the back of your mind, you just need to think, okay, maybe the game needs to be turned down a little bit. And that's as basic as I can go. But you can still set it up where your TeamSpeak friends audio is actually separate from your audio of, of the game. And a lot of YouTubers do that. I don't really do that just because I think it's overcomplicated. I don't really ever, I've never needed that. Um, but that is something that YouTubers do. Now, encoder is really important, and this will require an NVIDIA graphics card. If you do not have an NVIDIA graphics card, you will have to use X264, which will definitely stress your processor a lot, especially if you're streaming. I highly recommend, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card and you're playing to record for a long-term 
area of time, you need to get an NVIDIA graphics card. Um, and that's not just because they're you're cooler and better. I'm not biased towards NVIDIA. The NVIDIA ENC codec is one of the best. It is seriously the best codec I've ever found, and it's super nice. It makes your processor not have to do any work, and your graphic like it, it. It almost makes the recording just record without any stress on your computer. It's great. There's no frame rate drop at all, um, more than like let's say one frame, and it's just really, really good codec. Now you don't really have to worry about rescale output, out, output or custom mux, muxer muxer is that supposed to be mixer? I'm not really sure, um, but you don't need to worry about those. Go down to rate control and set it to CQP. Now I will go over streaming in a second where we set it to another one, but I will explain why. Set it to around 18 to 27. Now the lower the number, the higher the quality, but the much higher the file size, especially under 20 the file size of videos just exponentially gets huger and huger and huger and it goes all the way down to lossless which is very very large file sizes when i used to record with dx tori and my lossless uh lagrith codec or whatever it would take up probably three days of footage on my three terabyte hard drive and then it would it, it was done it wouldn't take up anymore and i think that's why i killed that hard drive so fast is that i recorded lossless to it but there's honestly no reason to record lossless footage Lossless footage is super high quality, yes, but YouTube bitrate, if you've ever watched YouTube 1080p, it's not 100% quality. You can tell the bitrate is already dumbed down just because YouTube doesn't want to host like thousands of gigabytes of, or thousands of terabytes, like pentabytes, I don't even know. <laughs> What's after terabytes? Somebody tell me in the comments. But they don't want to host way too much data just to watch a video. So they dumb it down a lot, and therefore you actually don't really need to record in perfect lossless quality. Now, I do see Jack Frags having this, I think, at 18, and I've actually ran this at 27 without much of a visual difference or much of a visual loss at all, but the file size was tiny. I mean, the smallest file size of any recording program I've ever seen. Fraps has nothing on this. <laughs> Fraps files are gigantic. This, this is the perfect preset. I have it at 23 at the moment because I like to zoom in on things and when you're zooming in on things bitrate does matter and so in my last videos where I've been like keyframing and stuff where I zoom in on characters and funny moments and stuff that is important but other than that it's not really a big deal. So have this around 18 to 27 and you can adjust it to whatever you want. I have it at 23 so if you just want to set it at 23 set it at 23. Now I believe that all the settings below this are just default settings that you don't really need to worry about, so there's that. Now again, we use CQP for recording. CQP is a rate control. It, it controls the bit rate per second of your video. So if, if the video is like complicated, like you're looking at a big group of trees or something in the background, then the bit rate will increase to be able to show the quality of those trees and the edges of the, all the leaves and stuff. But let's say you look at a flat wall in the video game. That flat wall does not really need that many bits to really show the detail on the wall. And so the bitrate actually will rapidly, dynamically go down in terms of the, the data per second. And it's really, really nice because that allows for a very, very high quality video when it's necessary. And when it's not necessary, it saves data from being used. Streaming, on the other hand, is different. Streaming requires your internet to be at a certain speed. And so when, sh when we're streaming, we don't want to overload our internet speed. So let's just go to Google, let's type in speed test. Now when we run the speed test on Google, it'll tell us that I think I have 50. I think I have 50. Oh wait, whoa, wait, what? Do I have, oh okay, I thought it was gonna go 60. Okay, so I have about 50 megabits per second there. And if you convert 50 megabits per second, oh wait, oops. To megabytes it is 6.25 megabytes so we now know that we have or I can say kilobytes actually and this will be a little bit easier for you guys it's, it's gonna be uh, 6200 or whatever but you have 6250 kilobytes so my maximum upload strength in OBS would be 6250 kilobytes so in streaming here my bitrate would be 6250 now that you wouldn't want to set it to that that's really way too high quality that's necessary at all and you're using all of your bandwidth whenever you do that. So you want to set it to something like, let's say 4500 or something like that. And to stream, I would recommend having at least over two, uh, 2500. That is probably the minimum and you would have to stream at 720p for 2500 to look good. But this is probably what you'll want. 
So again, I usually have this set at 4500 and I have this set with CBR. CBR is different from CQP, which we use for recordings. C CQP has a dynamic bitrate that goes up and down with the detail or the simplicity of a picture. Now, streaming, we can't have that bitrate fluctuate because it can fluctuate too high and it can take down our internet. You know what I mean? So this number could fluctuate to 8,000. I don't know if it would actually go that far. It probably wouldn't. But that would take down our internet, and that wouldn't exactly be good. I don't know exactly how much it fluctuates, but you don't want it really fluctuating at all, to be honest. Um, so make sure to have streaming set to CBR. Now, whenever you look at these, these are all the same settings. The only settings you really are going to need to change is if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, again, use this, and rate control is going to be CBR. And we will get into audio tracks in a second. As you can see, my audio tracks for streaming, or recording, sorry, are audio track one and two, and then streaming is four, and you'll see why. Um, so when we go to audio, this is pretty much ba like basic, and you don't really have, need to mess with anything except for two different or three different things if you're using your TeamSpeak and game audio separately. I don't really know exactly why my desktop audio device 2 is filled in, but not my desktop audio device 1, but it still works, so I'm fine with it. So I have my headphones, which is just all my desktop audio pretty much, as my desktop audio device 2. And so my headphones are there, and then my mic, or auxiliary audio device, is a microphone, which is a blue snowball, which if you're starting YouTube and you're wanting to record high-def audio, this is the one that I'm using right now, and it's an awesome recorder of audio. It's, it's, it's seriously one of the best microphones you can get for like 50 or 60 bucks out there. Um, so when you go to video, this is going to be your resolution changer. So if you want to record at 720, if you want to record at 1080, this is what you want to do. And when you're streaming, I would recommend streaming at 720 at first, especially if your processor isn't that powerful. It doesn't look bad. It actually makes the image look better when you're streaming at 720 because the bitrate has a, a lot less space to fill up, I guess is a good way to say it. And if you have a limited bitrate, then your bitrate looks better in 720p. Um, but also, it'll just leave a lot of less stress on your CPU or your graphics card or whatever is rendering or encoding your streams. So, you can also try recording at 720p, but I recommend if you're going to be recording, like, a lot of videos, record at 1080p at, like, 30fps at least, and maybe go to 60 if your hard drive is fast enough. But here, let's say if I wanted to record at 1080, I can set up 1080. Uh, make sure to have Lanzos. I don't think this affects like the uh, actual processing power of anything and then go to 60 FPS um, Now we can go to advanced down here and this it can do things like stream delay if I'm playing a game Where I have a stream delay where I'm playing rust or something Then I can enable this and therefore people cannot really follow me around because the stream is actually 60 seconds late for you guys to watch um, so this kind of saves me sometimes in PvP person versus person scenarios because sometimes there's stream snipers and stream snipers are people who will come after you in streams and try to kill you or try to do something to you or just try to try to be messing with you to get in the stream or something just because they think they're cool. Um, so there's stream delay, that's definitely necessary. Process priority, all this stuff you don't really exactly need. Just copy my settings if it's anything different because these work for me and they should work for you. Um, and that's pretty much it with basic video. I think. Let me go through everything else. Um, streaming is pretty simple. You can stream to different streaming services, and let's say your service is Restream, or it's YouTube, or it's Twitch. You would go into your Twitch, and you would find your stream key, and you would paste it in here. And that's pretty much like your password. You never want to give that out to somebody else, but you would go into Twitch. You can go find your stream key. I don't know exactly know where it is on Twitch, um, but you can go find your stream key, and you can stream to that. I use Restream, which is really, really nice. If you're not a Twitch partner, you can actually, you're allowed to stream to other competitors as well so I stream to both YouTube and Twitch at the moment which is super cool uh, because then I have two different chats open and stuff and it's it's really fun because people get to watch me on Twitch if they want to and on YouTube if they want to um, so let's click apply there and let's go back to the main screen where we were before so setting up audio is again very very important so your desktop audio too which is where all my desktop audio is coming from is right here don't worry about desktop audio I don't really know why it's here so just kind of ignore this bottom area uh, but these the mic aux and the desktop audio too is what, need, what we need to worry about 
So here's the audio tracks. Audio track one, audio track two, audio track three, audio track four. Now remember, th remember that I only had two audio tracks enabled. Back here in the settings in the audio, or wait, where was it? It was output. Um, I only had audio track one and two checked. This means that when I record my footage, there'll only be two audio tracks that are actually hooked to that. And those audio tracks will be the corresponding one track and the two track right here. So my microphone is gonna go all the way on the two track. So I wanna make sure I have this selected for the two track. And then my desktop audio is gonna go on the one track. So I have that selected on track one. Now I have all the tracks selected for track four because when I stream, I have it listening to track four and only track four because when you're streaming, you're streaming just only one version of audio and people will tell you if your voice is too loud or the game is too loud so you can adjust it manually. But when you're streaming, there's no need to edit the voice after so there's no need to have the audios split. So when I'm streaming, as you can see, I have I have the streaming tab listening to audio track four. And what this does is that when I'm when I'm streaming, it does a single audio track. So people can tell me, hey, your voice is too loud. I'll be like, okay, I'll lower it a little bit. That's perfectly fine. That's what happens in streams. Streams are going to be crazy if you're going to do them. Uh, there's lots of bugs and stuff to fix during a stream. Uh, so that's just going to happen. Uh, but when you're recording, it's going to do something like this. We're going to launch Arma. This might take a second. Uh, but we're going to launch Arma here and show you guys how it all works. Okay, so as you can see, my OBS is actually watching Arma, even though Arma is alt-tabbed down here. Um, so I can click the start recording. You can also set up hotkeys for this, by the way. So if you want start recording, I have my uh, keypad 6 as start recording, but never have a key as stop recording. Because sometimes I used to accidentally press the key, and it would stop my recordings midway through recording. So I just have start recording. And also never have your start streaming as a hotkey either because you might accidentally press that as well and just start streaming to like a hundred people on accident. I've done it twice. Um, so again, we're going to start recording here and that'll start recording our game which is in here. And once we open our game, we'll just play a little bit of Arma for a second to show you guys how this all works. And this is that Ultra by the way. I think this is the Ultra preset in Arma 3. And we are recording with actually two different recording programs at the moment because the recording you're watching, I'm also recording a second time. So, <laughs> so yeah, like I'm, I'm recording myself recording a video. So there's two recordings going on at the moment. So any performance I've, I've probably not seen before. Any performance hits, I probably won't, won't know. But as you can see, like, we're just gonna fire at these guys over here. Maybe fire a grenade. Alright. So that's pretty much just gonna be our short little test of Arma 3. So I'm gonna alt tab of Arma 3. Or not alt tab, alt F4 out of Arma 3. And we're gonna go back to our OBS. And so our OBS successfully recorded that. And so we can stop recording. And we can go to our editor now. And our editor is gonna be Adobe Premiere today. Uh, you can use Sony Vegas for this, and there's probably a, a, other video editors out there, but I do suggest either Sony or Premiere for this. And then go to Project. We're going to import our captured footage. So here we're going to go to Captured. We're going to scroll all the way down my captured and go all the way down to the Arma footage I had just recorded. This file right here, by the way, is actually the one you're watching right now. It's still in progress, though, because I'm still recording. Now we're going to wait for it to conform at the bottom right, which takes a little bit. Okay, so now if we drag this file into our timeline, it'll look like this. It, it has a video, as you can see on video layer one, and it has two different audio layers. Now if we stretch these out to look at the wavelengths themselves, you can actually see that there's two different wavelengths. So let's play just audio track one. So as you can see, audio track one is the desktop audio. And now audio track two, we'll just play a little bit of Arma for a second to show you guys how this all works, is my voice. So in together, in combination, we'll just play a little bit of Arma for a second to show you guys how this all works. And what I can do live is that I can edit 
live the audio wavelengths over here. And I can also go here, I can go audio gain, I can up the auto gain or lower it, and I can also just manually adjust it right here from negative infinity to plus six. So this is really useful because if the game gets too loud, for example, let's say we get into a battle, as you can see, and this is actually, this might be kind of freezing a little bit, but that's because I'm also recording, like I'm recording this recording at the moment. So I'm recording to the hard drive that this file is located on. So this will lag a little bit because this is also reading and writing. This is why, this is actually a good example of why you have a separate hard drive for recording because I'm recording and also reading, I'm writing and reading off the same hard drive at the same time. So this, this will never be smooth up here. Um, but yeah, as you can see, you can see like we're maybe the game is a little bit too loud, so we lower the game audio. Just gonna fire at these guys over here. Maybe fire a grenade, and that's pretty good. You know, that's just basically how I record and edit all my footage, and that's it. It's a really, really good method, and also the frame rate doesn't go down much whenever you're recording, especially with the E and V and C codec. I would suggest a pretty good PC though for recording and editing because. Especially with recording, you, I mean, I mean, being a YouTuber and all, you do want to have the best performance in your games while you record. Otherwise, you're just going to not want to record because you're, you know that your frame rate will go down below whatever it is usually. Um, this is a preset, though, with OBS Studio that will pretty much save you a lot of trouble with frame rate going down whenever you record and things like that. I think that this, all in all, is one of the best methods of recording any footage you've got right now, especially when you can also, with the same recorder, record just display. You can record your window. Um, streaming is really nice too, because let's say I want to stream my main, um, and I can go into like window capture and all these different things, and I can add different sources, for example, like Frankie's face. But here at the top right, for example, I have my little donations tab, which is a little browser source, and that just opens a window in my browser and automatically streams live the last five donations to me. So you can do really, really cool stuff with OBS. Um, and even this, like, look at that. That's super fun. Um, <laughs> but you can do really cool stuff with OBS. As you can see, I have like a stream starting shortly thing and I have this what we just made today which is just scene four it's another it's just two sources that I usually use when I record um, and so that is my basic guide today guys for recording streaming and editing your footage uh, and that's how I do it you guys have asked this for a long time I used to have a really really old video back in like January of how I used to do it um, but now I have this and this is a much better updated version of what I had before so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully didn't get too bored the entire time. So thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one.